Same story again, but different, as a garden gnome in the last maintains. Furthermore, the other type of recreation is marked by the artistic recycling of material found in Shakespeare's works, theoretical discussions, or sources Shakespeare might have used in a creative way. For instance, DuckTales' is much ado about Scrooge contains many elements of wish fulfillments for Shakespearean scholars, such as the discovery of original editions once owned by Drake Spear, and a note about a missing first play hit in his own house on an island which has a library and a personal indoor theater still in use by the descendants of his players. When Scrooge McDuck finds out that the play McDuck is about one of his ancestor who, uh, ancestors who is a miser who cheated and lied, he considers the comedy a tragedy and hides it again, not to damage his and the bar's reputation. The function of this animation cannot be looked down upon if we consider the recent authentication of a long lost copy of Cardenio and the construction of the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse built by using a similar uh, creative reconstructive vein. Beside these artistic wish fulfillments, Gargoyles has many Shakespearean allusions and mixes history, literature, mythology, and popular culture in order to create a creative amalgam, especially through characters like Macbeth, Macbeth Puck and the Weird Sisters. Among many themes, the series shows the vicious circle of revenge prompted by reciprocal betrayal of Demona, a gargoyle, uh, the one in the middle, and Macbeth that lasts for ages. The Weird Sisters, who had appeared in different shape, shapes as children, young adults, or maidservants, appear as gargoyles to De uh, Demona and as witches to Macbeth, both to unite their fates and show that revenge is no solution to solve problems. Furthermore, there are animations about Shakespeare in a straightforward manner. I have put straightforward in brackets because there is no such thing as straightforward adaptations, but they are relatively straightforward. These adaptations usually try to observe the original text as much as possible and relate a part or, a whole, or the whole of the play in a relatively shorter form to initiate younger audiences to the study of the written text, as Bloxage and Ayers maintain. Simplification and colloquialism may occur, especially when the animation is aimed at children or teenagers. The medium of animation, which younger audiences are familiar with for entertainment purposes, is used as a way to create a picture and an interest in them, as Steinberg asserts. For, for instance, Although the Masterpiece Theater Series parodies the Masterpiece Theater Series, it has a similar uh, educational purpose. In the episode about Hamlet, Mel Gibson is doing the scene about words, words, words with Elmo, who tries to figure out what he reads. And Mel Gibson constantly says words, 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 so that Elmo e eventually gets his own book. What doth thou read, Elmo, <laughs> oh. that maketh thee so happy? Oh, well, Elmo can't read it, Hamlet. Elmo's looking at pictures, pictures, pictures. <laughs> On the other hand, the Animaniac segments are marked by the use of an interpreter for young audiences who may not understand Shakespearean diction, as in the segment about Hamlet, where Dot translates Yako's words. And now, the Warner Brothers, in a scene from Shakespeare's Hamlet, translated for those viewers who, like Yako, have no idea what he's talking about. Alas, poor Yorick. Whoa, check out Skullhead. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He was funny. He hath bore me on his back a thousand times. He gave me piggyback rides. And now, how abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. I'm going to blow chunks. So it's like an interlineal uh, translation in that sense. And similarly, in the segment about Macbeth, Yako functions as an interpreter in a cooking show uh, where the ingredients include Batman. Uh, similarly, the element of uh, laughter for edification is used by the series Hysteria, 
uh, where in a segment a course presents all of the plays in a condensed way. I will show just three plays. And now from the Globe Theater, the Hysteria Kid Chorus. A play by William Shakespeare always stimulates your thought. Because he spent two hours trying to figure out the plot. He wrote famous lines and phrases for his dog like out there spot. I'm a victim of circumstance. So who is this guy the critics praise who's famous for his turn of phrase? Wrote 37 different plays and lived in Elizabethan days. And made Lorenz Olivier's career. Let me a He lived in Stratford on Avon apartment to be. Was it to be or not to be? I really don't know. It's confusing to me. How do you understand Shakespeare with all of the harps and the hose and the flowery prose that he writes? For memory tights, so bring up the lights and let's meet the bar. Ladies and gentlemen, Hysteria proudly presents the plots of all 37 plays by William Shakespeare. His real father is killed by his brother who now becomes king and then marries his mother. It ends up with everyone killing each other and that is the story that's told by the bar. Hey, nani, nani, na, tra la la, la 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 At Romeo, Juliet, everyone cries and Titus Andronicus, everyone dies. Don't you just love me, Shakespearean guys? <laughs> you go to the theater and pay all that money to see all these actors who dress really funny. You say to your date, are you getting this, honey? Because I'm really lost, so explain it to me. Hey, nani, 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 na, tra la la, la 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 Macbeth is a guy who is really ambitious And that's why the king soon sleeps with the fishes Then he kills others, it's really quite vicious Until in the end he gets stabbed in the dove Oh no no! By Macduff Better! But Shakespeare's plays are the places to be For violence and killing and murder you see You really can't show it on children's TV But that is the story That was bloody and gory Yes that is the story Very told by the boy All's well that ends well so as you have seen, wordplay, uh, along with the appearance of contemporary or historical figures like Mike, Tays Mike Tyson, lend me your ear, or Thomas Jefferson with his date, uh, further add laughter to the rhythmic song. The use of music makes the text more memorable. And yet there are also commentaries about Shakespeare, animation, and the position of young audiences, which makes the segment more analytical. Throughout, the difficulties to understand the content of Shakespeare's plays and their violent content not suited for children is pointed out, which shows the uh, difficulty to combine Shakespeare and animation. Apart from segmental educational videos about Shakespeare's plays, there have been also video series intended for students of literature that analyze entire plays. The video Sparkno series present non-animated cartoon tableau through zoom technique to create an illusion of action where no further informative explanations of who is who is given, as the aim of the narration is to give a brief synopsis. Except for Romeo and Juliet, where the female narrator uses varied intonation, male narrators relate the synopses through quick pace and monotonous intonation. Abbreviation and simplification are used to direct the audience to sparknotes.com, quote, to learn more, unquote. Uh, which unfortunately renders the series a cheap commercial of the website. Although the Cliff Notes Shakespeare seems to be similar to the Spark Notes version, Cliff, a superhero-like character, introduces and narrates his notes, which are really animated. Each episode begins with Cliff, who relates a, catch, a catchphrase of the play, and a character, or at least a part of the character, who is in the library, gives the major theme or a brief overview. Layouts of designs are uh, Sorry, layouts of designs of characters are used interchangeably uh, in different plays, which are not only for economic reasons, but also to emphasize the theatrical aspect of mimetic representation. They are played by, by players, uh, almost. Yet contrary to Spark no Sparks Notes, more information on Shakespeare's sources, themes, and messages are given, like an annotated text. And comedy and colloquialism are used without simpl simplifying the text, to make the notes more memorable. As for themes, they loved each other so much. That's one of the themes of the play, dear. Tragic ending, right? I guess that's why they call it a tragedy. But what exactly caused their deaths? Was it Romeo's impulsiveness? Juliet's rebellion against her parents? Friar Lawrence's meddling? The family feud? Or was it written in the stars? Hmm? Now, some scholars think that this is the most important question of the play. Was it fate? or free will. What do you think? I think I'm gonna switch to online dating. For instance. <laughs> uh, 
as for uh, Hamlet's procrastination, there are several scenes I have cut together. There, the trap is sprung, and Hamlet, now convinced of Claudius' guilt, can be confident in his mission to avenge his father's death. Oh, heart, lose not thy nature! Avenge me! I'm getting to it, okay? On the way to England, Hamlet sees Fortinbras leading his army to avenge his father's death by taking back land in Poland, and his own resolve grows strong. I must act. If Norwegians can do it, I can do it, and I will avenge my father at last! <laughs> Where he's now determined to take action. I have much news to share! Hey. Mm. Now it looks like Hamlet's finally mustered the resolve to avenge his father. <laughs> now insist you as murderous damn Dane! Drink off this potion! <laughs> Is that union here? Follow my father! <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, one on equality. I was born of a cesarean section. Ah, oh, man, dang it! Technically not of a woman. Ah. <laughs> Hence, edifying uh, animations that live up to their name can be used to teach while giving delight. Although adaptations as art are valued over other animations, the problem of brevity and fidelity can also be observed in these, such as in Barry Purvis's Next, the infinite variety show, which shows all of Shakespearean plays in just five minutes. Yet through several techniques, major themes are dealt in these adaptations in a short time and in a very artistic manner. Another example is the highly acclaimed series, The Animated Tales, a joint project between BBC Wales and uh, Russian animators, where each episode lasts for 30 minutes. For instance, Romeo and Juliet uses cell animation marked for bright colors, contrasting the sense of doom, which is constantly reminded through the mechanical clock on the clock tower, where the cleric matches the fatal intervention of Friar Lawrence. Similarly, Macbeth uses cell animation, but it is marked by fluidity in transformation that emphasizes equivocality. Speak, if you can. What are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to the Thane of Glans. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to the Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. Thou shalt be king hereafter. And this kind of fluidity uh, also shows the disintegrating force of ambition, whose fatal consequences are reminded by a skullhead, skullhead fool that functions like the idiot referred in Macbeth's Soluki. Hamlet, in this sense, is overshadowed by the darkness created through the oil on glass technique. Here, some characters, in order to create some kind of a tradition between uh, other forms of uh, adaptations, look similar to their former counterparts in movies, where Hamlet looks like Olivier's Hamlet with the haircut of his Richard III, unfortunately. Uh, Ophelia stands out from the rest of the characters with her white clothing, which reflects her innocence and passive obedience to the dictums of the dark male world that surrounds her, from which she liberates in a very artistic manner. In conclusion, animations about Shakespeare are among the upstart crowds of our generation. They imitate, they are beautified with Shakespeare's feathers, and creatively recycle the material they have found which contribute to the preeminence of Shakespeare in the consciousness of people. Academic scorn and prescriptive handling should be avoided to describe the effects of animation on the reception of Shakespeare, whereby new media usages of animation along with fan fiction will be placed onto a solid tradition of Shakespeare animation, making the former more meaningful for depicting reader response in the form of animations. 
thank you for thank you very much for your patience.